coming up on the Children's Hour every day is Earth Day, and we're going to celebrate our planet, the only known place in the universe that can sustain human life, with the authors of a new book for kids called The Tantrum That Saved the World. We'll be with renowned climate scientist Dr. Michael Mann and illustrator and author Megan Herbert. We're also joined by two kids from the Global Warming Express. Kaya and Marina are dedicated to raising awareness about climate change because they want a future for their grandchildren. This episode is mixed with excellent music. Celebrate Earth Day with the Children's Hour. The Children's Hour is Kids Public Radio, produced by the Children's Hour Incorporated, a New Mexico nonprofit. Find out more about us and see pictures and links related to this show at childrenshour.org. It's time for the Children's Hour, Kids Public Radio. How do oil companies deal with oil spills? I don't know how. Slick lawyers. Oh, like slick, like oily, slick. <laughs> 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 it's time for the children's hour. It's public radio. Let's save the earth, let's save the world. From all the dangers here, let's find the hope, let's give the love. Spread the word, the change is here. Cause whatever it takes, and wherever it takes us, we gotta do something, do something. Cause every day is a little scarier, like a wild boy trying to knock your door down. We are the earth. Brand new out of New Zealand, Jackie B and the mini band from their CD, Shooting Stars. You're listening to the Children's Hour. I'm Katie Stone. Wow, I am just so happy to be with you on this beautiful planet spinning around a beautiful sun on a day that is a gift to each one of us. And I'm here with all of you in listener land and all these great kids on Zoom. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. And who's with us today? Hi, it's Lily May. Hello, it's Amadeus. Hi, it's Isaac. Hi, it's Beth. Hi, it's Luminata. Hi, it's Daniel. Hi, friends, it's Melissa. 
Hi, it's Cade. Hi, it's Gareth. Well, you all, thank you so much for being here today. And we have amazing guests with us today, all of whom are focusing on our Earth. We have the Dr. Michael Mann. He is considered one of the foremost climate science researchers in the world. And he is with us to talk about his new book for kids. Along with Megan Herbert, his co-author, they've written The Tantrum That Saved the World. And our conversation is going to include two friends from Global Warming Express. These are kids who are climate activists making a real difference in their communities. You'll find out how. There's so much to love about planet Earth. It is indeed the only planet we can survive on in the universe that we know of. And so it is our duty, our privilege, and our responsibility to take good care of it. This is The Hip Waiters, right here on The Children's Hour. Gaia, she knows, she knows a few things, she knows we should keep this planet. She knows She's made it her task To show everyone Our life is in harmony Under the sun Gaia, she knows Gaia, she knows you 
That was the Hip Waiters, and that's just a single called Gaia She Knows. You're listening to the Children's Hour, and today on the show, we're focusing on our little planet in this little corner of the universe we call the Earth. It is our home, and this Earth is perfectly adapted for us, and we are perfectly adapted for it. And as we know, it is the only known planet in the universe that can sustain us human beings. So our planet Earth has some things going on right now that we all should know about. You know, the planet is fine. We're still spinning and going around the universe just like you would expect. But it's what we human beings are doing to our planet, our atmosphere, our surface, and our water. And that's why today on the show, we're going to be talking about the climate. We are joined by one of the authors of a brand new book for children that just came out. It's called The Tantrum That Saved the World. And it was illustrated and written by Megan Herbert. She lives just south of Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the Children's Hour, Megan. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Great to have you, Megan. The kids in our crew have a lot of questions for you. Let's start with Isaac. What is this book about? This book is about a little girl who isn't necessarily engaged with any climate stuff. She's a regular girl living her life, and all of a sudden she gets an interruption in the form of a few visitors coming to her house. And these visitors are all climate refugees. I don't know if you've heard this term before, but a climate refugee is a person, or in our story, also an animal, whose home is disrupted because of the changing climate. And all these creatures and people turn up on her her doorstep one by one and say, you have to help us. And this story is about how she deals with that which then makes her say to herself, well, hang on a second, this could also happen to me. And she finds ways to help the animals and is met with all sorts of problems, uh, often in in the form of adults who aren't doing enough. I'm sure you're all quite familiar with that. But this is about her finding her voice and joining forces with all these different creatures and people to actually make a difference. What inspired you to write this book? I was living in Iceland when I first had the idea to write this book. And in fact, Michael Mann came to Iceland for a conference and I met him and heard all about climate change and what was happening. And this was back in 2013, so quite a while ago when we first started talking. And I had recently had a baby. He was only about one then. And I was watching climate change happening all around me in Iceland. And I I was always quite aware of it, but became even more aware of it, knowing that I had um, a child whose life I had to make as good possible as I could. So I thought, it's time to do something with the skills that I have, which was writing and illustrating. And I spoke with, with Dr. Mann and we put our heads together and we thought this is something we both want to do. He also is a is a parent. So I thought I would use the skills I have to, to make a difference if I could. So you talked about a whole bunch of different characters coming to this girl's house. I was wondering, how did you decide who would come to her house? That's a great question because it took a long time to decide. I did a lot of research and Michael Mann and I refined the list together. And what I wanted to do we show that this problem is going to affect every single part of our globe and every single part of our ecosystem, all the different ecosystems. So we tried to find animals that are endangered from all different parts of the world. And in terms of the, the, the human characters in the book, again, trying to choose from all different regions and different walks of life. Of course, there are so many others we wanted to include, but we had to just narrow it down to a handful What do you wish for readers to take from this book? I hope that readers realise that it is absolutely okay to feel angry, stressed, upset about the climate crisis, but what is most important is what you do next. And if you can learn something about 
climate change and teach others or change something in your own life, that's the most important thing. So to take any feelings you have which are absolutely valid but think how can I turn this around for the better? How can I convert it into something positive? So true. We are speaking with author Megan Herbert. She is the writer and illustrator of the new children's book, The Tantrum That Changed the World, a story about our climate and what we can do to keep it safe. We're going to be joined by her co-author, Dr. Michael Mann, in a few moments, right here on The Children's Hour. Space. For what it's worth, it's a nice place to live. Blue and green atmosphere. When the water and the air are clean, you can find life everywhere. Planet distance from the sun it's a fine place to grow old between the day and the night the rate of rotation feels all right birds sing and the sun shines waters flow Time brought us It's Easy Being Green and Marco Polo brought us Planet Earth. 
in the background, Bim Scala Bim. You're listening to the Children's Hour to our Earth Day show. We'll be right back. The Children's Hour is produced by the Children's Hour Incorporated, an educational nonprofit based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're listener supported at childrenshour.org. Support for the Children's Hour provided by Electric Playhouse, an immersive entertainment and events center in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The Playhouse is open. You can purchase tickets, learn about events, play, and other opportunities, including future locations and music shows, at electricplayhouse.com. The Children's Hour is sponsored by the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science, announcing Dogs, a Science Tale, an ambitious multimedia hands-on science exhibition where guests can experience the extraordinary way that dogs see, hear, and smell the world. Presented by the Bank of Albuquerque, the exhibit runs through May 1st. More info at nmnaturalhistory.org. Rain, rain, hey, I love the smell of the rain, rain, rain in my face and I'm run, run, running in place and I'm loving the smell of the sun, sun, I love the warmth of the sun, sun, sun on my nose and the sun, sun, shine on my clothes and I'm loving the warmth of the wind, wind, I love the rush of the wind. When, when in my hair as I dance, dance, dancing in air, and I'm loving the rush of the sand, sand. I love the crunch of the sand, sand, sand in my toes and the sand dunes marching in rows. Oh, I'm loving the crunch of the sea, sea. I love the dance of the sea, sea. Swimming so fearless and free, free, floating and diving, loving the dance of the stars, stars. I love the glow of the stars, stars, flying so high into space, space. This is my place, and I'm loving the glow of the rain in my face. Sun on my nose, my nose, my hair, my hair, my toes, is my toes. That's Sweet Honey in the Rock right here on the Children's Hour. Today on the show, we're talking about all things related to climate change. And our next guest, Dr. Michael Mann, is with us. He's been studying our planet's climate for decades. Welcome to the Children's Hour, Dr. Mann. Thanks. It's great to be with you all. Why don't you tell a little bit about what it is that you do? I'm a climate scientist and uh, and a professor, and I will be uh, joining the University of Pennsylvania next year. And in fact, I'll be directing a new center, which is the Penn Center for Science, Sustainability, and the Media, which is, you know, it's really about communication. 24 years ago in 1998, you created a picture that changed how we think about our climate. It's called the hockey stick graph. And for everybody listening, I want you to think about a hockey stick laying on the ground and the handle is nice and straight. And then all of a sudden you hit the bottom, which then points straight up like at a 90 degree angle in another direction. Dr. Mann, why did your graph look like that? And what was it saying? Yeah. So this was a graph that we reconstructed uh, temperatures. We tried to extend the record of global temperatures back many centuries, because we only really have widespread thermometer data around the world for a little more than a century. And we know that the planet is warmed up 
more than a degree Celsius, a degree and a half Fahrenheit, um, nearly two degrees Fahrenheit now. We know that the planet has warmed up that much over the past century, but what the historical record alone can't tell us is how unusual that is. And so what we did was turn to indirect measures of the climate. We call them proxy records, things like tree rings, and corals, annual coral layers in, in a coral skeleton, or ice cores. These are natural archives where you can actually count back the years because they're annual layers or annual growth rings. And there is something about the biology or the chemistry about that particular archive that relates to the climate at the time that you know, it recorded that information. And so we can use these so-called proxy records to extend the temperature record back in time. And what we found was that that dramatic warming that we've seen during the industrial era was without precedent as far back as we could go. Now we could only go back about a thousand years with the data that we had. Now, a couple decades later, one group recently, just within the last year, published an estimate of temperatures going back more than 25,000 years. So the implication of that graph of course, is that there is something truly unusual taking place with our climate today. And it probably has to do with us. It probably has to do with the carbon pollution that we have been producing. And now in the time since then, I've had an opportunity to play a role in informing this, this conversation that we're having here today about what is arguably the greatest challenge that we face as a civilization. What are some of the things you are doing to learn more about global warming and the solutions to global warming? These days, I still do research. One of the things that I'm very interested in is the impact that climate change is having on extreme weather events, the sorts of extreme weather events that we've seen uh, in recent years here in the United States, down in Australia, in Europe, uh, around the world, these wildfires and heat waves and, and floods. And so it turns out that the science of that is really interesting. The connections, in fact, are so complicated that to solve these problems, to solve the physics, you end up using some of the same mathematics that was developed in the uh, 20th century to solve problems in quantum mechanics, the behavior of matter at the smallest scale. And here it turns out that the same mathematics actually describes phenomena at the global scale and how climate change can cause weather systems to get stuck, like we've seen in recent summers where those, you know, the, the rainfall just stays in the same place day after day, or the hot baking sun and the drought and the wildfires just sticks over, you know, Western North America, California for weeks at a time. So, you know, it turns out to explain that you're dealing with some pretty heavy physics and, and mathematics. And, you know, it really has direct bearing on the impacts that we're feeling. And one of the things that we've found is that the climate models that you hear about, the models that are used by the United Nations, you know, to project future climate changes, if anything, those models are overly conservative. You say overly conservative. They're pretending like it's not as bad as it really is. Yeah. So... You know, the, the scientists are often accused by critics of overstating the problem. But in fact, the models that we use, because of the limitations in those models, are probably underestimating the impact that we are having on these extreme weather events. And so that's a problem that, that has been of great interest to me, sort of trying to understand the underlying processes and, and maybe how we can get them better represented in those models that we use as guidance for adaptation, what's coming, and how can we best be resilient in the face of the climate changes that are now unavoidable. And of course, it informs the issue of mitigation. It tells us how bad climate change is going to be. It's all the more a compelling argument for us to dramatically accelerate the transition away from fossil fuels towards clean renewable energy. You mean stop burning gas, stop burning coal, stop drilling for oil, get our power from the sun or the wind or hydropower from water. Now, all of that's essential to slow this curve. So why aren't people doing that really fast right now? Well, you know, that's where you all come in. You know, we adults have had limited success in getting the attention of politicians, 
and influential opinion leaders. And all of that has changed. And in the book, you know, when Megan and I wrote the first edition of this book, it was in some ways it was prophetic because it predated uh, the rise of Greta Thunberg in the youth climate movement, even though the story is really about young folks becoming empowered to be the change that they wish to see. And so it was, it was truly rewarding to actually see that vision that we had play out uh, in the real world. And it's changed everything. The youth climate movement, the fact that young folks are coming out and demanding that adults do something before we ruin the planet for you, for future generations, that's changed the conversation quite a bit. And it's why I'm optimistic uh, that we really have a, a, a chance here, but you have to all keep at it. It's made a difference, but you have to keep the pressure on. And the rest of us, us adults, we have to take advantage of the opportunity that you're all giving us to finally get the action that we need here. If I may weigh in as well here, um, I think what is really important to remember is that not everyone needs to be a leader in this. You don't all have to be like Greta. And if you're not comfortable to be that, that's okay. You can actually have a huge effect in your own family or with your grandparents or in your classroom. And at this stage, every single step we take in the right direction makes a difference. And it doesn't matter if it's a little, a little step or a huge leap, but if we're all doing that, and that's where kids have so much power and you can do things in your own home and your own community that make a massive difference. And you can see with the things that you guys are doing with the Global Warming Express, that's an, a perfect example of that. It starts small, starts with a thought or an idea, and then you can grow it. But it's the important thing is to do a thing, choose a thing and do that. That's Megan Herbert. She's the author of the book, The Tantrum That Saved the World, along with our other guest, Dr. Michael Mann. You're listening to the Children's Hour. Today, we're talking about our beautiful planet Earth. There's much more to discuss. But first, this is Floor Bromley, right here on the Children's Hour. All of us in very different ways. Look at the sun and its rays. There's beauty in all it does. Many secrets nature has. Thunder rumbles in the mountain. Rain will fall like a fountain. Trees that purify our air. A gift you just can't compare. Mother Earth is full of fun. us beauty and light. Nature is such a delight. The wind caresses my face. Nature's love I can embrace. The river goes down the hill. Oh, it gives me such a thrill. Nature is balance and grace.
listening to the Children's Hour and with us on the show today are two extraordinary young people, Kaya and Marina, who have been climate activists here in the state of New Mexico and in Massachusetts. And they're with us today from the organization called Global Warming Express. Hello, Kaya. Hello, Marina. Hi there. Hi. We're really glad that you're with us. Marina, your organization, the Global Warming Express, started 10 years ago with a book you wrote. You were 10 back then. You're 19 now, which is quite a long activist career. Why did you start off by sharing how you became a climate activist? Yeah, so I I dreamed up the idea of the book when I was in third grade um, because I was, you know, worried about the animals and climate change. I started writing letters to President Obama, realized uh, he, you know, wasn't really getting them. So I, you know, went on a mission to write a book and give it to President Obama in hopes to change our planet as we know it um, and help climate change slow down. And this turned into an after-school program with a lot of advocacy. And I just felt the need to you know, stand up for what I believed in and stand up for, I, I've said this many times, you know, my children and my grandchildren, the ones that have, that are going to inherit the planet. And just to, to really advocate for the animals and the plants and everything that they can advocate for themselves. Kaya, what made you become a climate activist? And if you don't mind, tell us how old you are. I'm 11 years old in third grade. I didn't really know much about it at the time, but then when I started hearing about it in the club, I just realized that it really wasn't right, that we were kind of destroying our planet, and there's only one planet, and we were also destroying it for the other animals, not only us. And I thought it was a really great idea that we were kind of standing up for that. What are some of the things that you want to teach kids about in this program? The main things that we strive to teach our, you know, the kids that are in our program are science in general, because in New Mexico, when I was in school, I didn't learn a lot of science um, and climate science and arts, again, didn't have a lot of that in school. And I mean, just in general, how to how to speak up for yourself, whether it be about climate or just about life. Um, So I think those things are really important. Kaya, I'd love to hear why you've made activism such a big part of your life. And is there anything we can do to protect the environment? So that the next generation can have a better kind of environment to live in and also other animals, not only humans. So they can live in a better place. And I think everybody can help by encouraging others not to like use single use plastic bags or styrofoam or things just like that and try to recycle too. Those are good suggestions. We're going to come back and talk more with the kids in Global Warming Express, Kaya and Marina, who are with us. Dr. Michael Mann and Megan Herbert are co-authors of the brand new book on climate change and climate science for kids called The Tantrum to Save the World. They're with us too. We're going to have a conversation all together right after this. You're listening to the Children's Hour. We'll be right back. This pretty planet spinning through space. Your garden, your harbor, your holy place. Gold and sun going down. Gentle blue giant, spin us around all through the night. Safe till the morning light. This pretty planet spinning through space. Your garden, your harbor, your holy place. Oh, and sun going down. Gentle blue giant. Your harbor, your morning light, this pretty 
Children's Hour is supported in part by an award from New Mexico Arts, a division of the New Mexico Department of Cultural Affairs, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Support for the Children's Hour is also provided by the City of Albuquerque's Cultural Services Department and the Urban Enhancement Trust Fund. Support for the Children's Hour is provided by Token Ibis, a nonprofit making philanthropy accessible to everyone. To sign up, go to tokenibis.org. Shake with their Earth Day song right here on the Children's Hour. Over the break, you heard Neller and the Happy Campers. That's Bobby Johnson and Tom Chapin from Family Tree with Pretty Planet way back when. I'm Katie Stone here on the Children's Hour. We just have a few more minutes with our guests today on our Earth Day special. Kaya and Marina are climate activists from Global Warming Express. And also with us are Dr. Michael Mann and Megan Herbert. They are the co-authors of the brand new book that's a kid's book on climate change and the climate called The Tantrum That Saved the World. Well, I wonder, Kaya Marina, did you hear anything that Dr. Mann or Megan Herbert said that left you with thoughts that maybe you'd like to share? One thing I was thinking about was you know, I'm now I'm older, so I I don't necessarily have the time as much as I'd like to, to still be super, super active within the climate activist community. But, you know, having kids like Kaya and and all of you guys on here, um, it is really important, I think, that you guys are able to learn to, to stand up for the planet that we live on and give back. And I think that it's really inspirational that that kids are learning about this. One thing that stood out to me was that you don't necessarily need to start with something like as big as speaking at the roundhouse. It can be a little progression of just recycling something that can actually help a lot. As well, having, having conversations is huge. If you are sitting down with somebody who doesn't have the information you have, and you can explain something to them, um, you are, and there's in fact a part of the book where Sophia is doing just that, and you can see that as each person speaks to more people, this group grows. It starts off with her telling this little group here, and then they tell more people, and they tell more people, and that's actually so powerful. So even one conversation is a big deal. It's sort of like an infection, but it's a good infection. It's something that we want to spread, you know, and and taking even one action can often lead us down a path of greater and greater engagement. But, you know, as Megan has said here, one of the most important things we can do is talk about this problem. Make sure that it's part of the conversation, the daily conversation that we're having. What are some of the positive changes that we can expect to see over the next 100 years that have come from maybe some of us climate activists? Great question. 
one of the things that the science has taught us, which is really important, is that there is a direct impact of our efforts to reduce these carbon emissions, carbon pollution. And we used to think that there were decades of warming that were locked in and there was nothing we could do about it. But as we start to use more elaborate models, um, the models tell us that we get a, a little bit of an assist because the oceans and, and life on earth continues to pull carbon out of the atmosphere. So when we stop putting it into the atmosphere, it's sort of like a sink where you've turned off the faucet and the drain is open. So the water level goes down. That happens to carbon dioxide as well. So that helps us out a little bit. And it turns out what it tells us is if we reduce carbon emissions now, there's an immediate impact. Things get better immediately. And so that's why it's so important because we don't have that long. Uh, if we wait another 10 years, then at that point, it will be too late to keep warming below a really dangerous three degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why it's so important that we act now. But the science tells us that there's agency here, that we can have a direct impact, the actions that we take part in now. And I would like to add to that as well, that we were talking about cause and effect before. And just as all the problems of, that we're experiencing now are interconnected and bouncing off each other and affecting each other. The same can be said for the positive things we do and the solutions. So each time you express or feel empathy and learn about a situation that's happening and try to help and fix it, that also has a knock-on effect. And before you know it, you're building that sense of empathy in your community. You're engaging people. So know that every single action you're taking is actually building on other people's actions. And that makes a huge effect, not just on climate, but as um, a, a worldwide community of people who are working together. And you can't underestimate how positive that is. That's so hopeful. Megan Herbert and Dr. Michael Mann are the co-authors of a brand new book just released called The Tantrum That Saved the World. And we've got links and pictures and so much more posted to childrenshour.org. Look for this episode every day, Earth Day. And also we've had with us from Global Warming Express, Kaya and Marina. Thank you, everyone, for being with us on the Children's Hour today. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. And, and you all inspire me. And so together we, we can do this. Thank you, Dr. Mann. This is Aaron Nigel Smith and Red Yarn from their brand new release right here on the Children's Hour. With our ears, with our eyes, we can hear, recognize what is wrong, what is right, what needs change. With our hands. With our feet, with our hearts, to keep the beat, do the work, march the streets to make some change. Diddly bop, 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 hey! Just dust off yourself and roll up your sleeve, we got work to do like making changes. changes. Go on, man, change, man, what's hey, right from wrong? That through the ages, it's the same stages. Hey. Yes, the same stages. Hear me no sheep. We need a relief. Lots of stress and too much grief. We all is a unity, honestly. You better believe me. Just think what the future would be. If we all don't act so justly. So open your eyes, see what I to change. Don't be strange, let's all rearrange. And let's have some love exchange. With our ears, with our eyes, we can hear and recognize what is wrong, what is right, what needs change. Oh yeah, with our hands, with our feet, with our hearts, keep the beat. Tomorrow, 
Such a simple thing as some say We will lose sight of what's real We'll fall for any deal But someone else has the price to pay With our ears With our eyes We can't hear and recognize What is wrong What is right What needs change? And with my hands, with our hands, with our feet. Megan Schoenbaum here on the Children's Hour from her brand new release, Light. Here at the Children's Hour, we're powered 100% by solar energy. There are a lot of ways we try to cut our use and consumption in order to help save the planet. There are a lot of strategies and ideas that the Global Warming Express has, too. You can find so much information at childrenshour.org. Look for this episode every day. Earth Day. We're going to go out with one more by Steve Pallara. We hope that you spend a little time today treasuring our beautiful planet. Thanks for listening to the Children's Hour. I'm Katie Stone. We'll catch you next time. Whoa, the planet Earth is a wonderful place. The planet Earth is a wonderful place. The planet Earth is such a wonderful place. It's my little blue dot in outer space Oh, I'm thankful for the mountains Thankful for the trees I love to hear the babbling brooks lead us to the seas 
I love to fly my kite with brother wind and sister breeze. Blows the dusty pollen around. She always makes me sneeze. Planet Earth is a wonderful place. Planet Earth is a wonderful place. Planet Earth is such a wonderful place. It's my little blue dot in outer space. Oh, I'm thankful for the creatures like elephants, so great and tall. I'm thankful for the little bugs, so curly, squishy, and small. I love to see my monkey friends act silly, having a ball, and I love to hear the songbird sing his new song, the best of all. Oh, the planet Earth is a wonderful place. The planet Earth is a wonderful place. The planet Earth is such a wonderful place. It's my little blue dot in outer space. And size. I've seen so many colors of skin, so many colors in their eyes, and I know that everybody has beauty deep down inside. 'Cause it's always more fun to laugh together, or at least say we tried. Oh, the planet Earth. Is a wonderful place. The planet Earth is a wonderful place. The planet Earth is such a wonderful place. It's my little blue dot in outer space. It's my little blue dot in outer space. It's my little blue dot in outer space. Children's Hour is an independent production of the Children's Hour Incorporated, a New Mexico nonprofit corporation. Our show was written by Katie Stone, with help from all of us and the kids' crew. Find lots of information about us at childrenshour.org. Many thanks to Dr. Michael Mann and Megan Herbert for being with us today, and also to Marina and Kaya from the Global Warming Express. Our podcast can be found wherever you get your podcast or at patreon.com slash the children's hour or ask your smart speaker to play the children's hour podcast we post our photos and more on instagram facebook and twitter find us at tch radio our theme music is written by ck Barlow. the children's hour is distributed by the children's hour incorporated prx and the pacifica radio network Thanks for listening to the Children's Hour Kids Public Radio.